You're looking at him. And you're Michael and Jason? Yes, I, I, Tom has me beat. Uh, uh, I did not do Leatherface. <laughs> and I don't know how he did it with this bill, too. Leatherface <laughs> oh, is anyway. huge. Uh -oh. There's a lot of costume. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, you guys are known for being the men behind the masks. How did you get into that gig? What, what was it stunt work? Was it, were you an actor first? Well, I, for, for me, and like most of the people you see in, as Jason or Michael, of course, are, are stuntmen because they don't have to have any dialogue. That's the most dangerous stunt you can do. And, and everything they do is action, so they hire a stuntman. And when I got to do uh, Jason, I knew the stunt coordinator. You might remember it, me, known him too. His name is uh, Dick Warlock. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Anyway, he's friends of mine. We're both in the, the Stuntman's Association. He brought me in to see the director, and the director picked me. So that's how I got to do Jason. And Michael, another one of our uh, members of the Stuntman's Association, was, was um, uh, Leonard, uh, 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 Michael's uh, 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 Fred Lerner, uh, Michael Lerner, his son, who also played some of those characters. He brought me in, and, and they selected me to do the, the uh, Michael's character as well so i was very fortunate to do both of those tremendous what about you i was a i'm an actor first but i was also a college basketball athlete basketball player so mine came through um acting but being able to be physical and the height helped also being yes, tall you are yes. quite tall yes yeah so jason wasn't always super tall but then obviously he got bigger as the films yeah. went on. Jason has grown, hasn't he, over the years? So has Michael. They both have gotten taller and taller. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, Michael's been a little bit like, yeah, up and down. Yes. Think. Nick Castle started, you know, he's, he's not that tall, and then they slowly got taller with uh, the years. Yeah. Tyler Maine's about seven foot nine. Um, so for yourself, was working on Friday the 13th, part five, and you were Jason in Freddy vs. Jason? Yes. Did you look to the previous iterations of Jason, or did you make it your own? And ask the same question to yourself, obviously, coming into the franchise later on. Yeah, well, I think it depends on what you're doing. Like, when you had to come out of the water, there's not much you're gonna do about no. looking at somebody else. You gotta no. get from the water, underneath the water, and walk out, so that's a different situation. Yes. In my case, uh, I didn't necessarily look at any past Jasons, because as a stuntman, that's our job to, to double people. And you get used to doing that. You know how they walk, you try to match that. Yeah. So that was kind of what I did. I just knew that I was gonna be this character. And as a stunt guy, we always do action. We're always doing something violent. So it wasn't too hard to, to make that a, a case in uh, whether it was Jason or Michael. I was a horror fan growing up, so I knew these characters, especially a My Myers fan. So I mimic Myers as a kid. So I knew the movements, That's and it was just a, yeah, it was a, it was an easy transition. It wasn't like, oh, what are these movies? I've never seen them. Let me look them. So I already knew it because I was a fan. Being a fan and then being Jason and Michael, how is that? How how was that for you? Was that like a? I know you do a lot of cool shit. Yeah. Was that a pinch me moment for you? It was a surreal moment, especially since Freddy vs. Jason was my first big movie because I was wow. a youngster then, and. Uh, what was really surreal was working with Robert England, because here I am as a kid growing up watching Nightmare on Elm Street, and then I'm on set with Freddy frickin' Krueger. I mean, come on. <laughs> Is he in, does he stay in character when he's got the makeup no, on? No, no, he's okay. no. He's, okay. He's, a, he, he was, he's such a fan, though, of horror and his character that he was telling me stories. Freddy vs. Jason took 10 years for that movie to be made. It was, yeah, yeah. It was being shopped around, and it just wasn't happening and thank god because i would have been in grade school when uh when it first started so it, it they, took the time it was supposed to start they were waiting for you that's what yeah, it was there you go in the crowd we've got tim with the roving mic so if you want to ask a question we're not waiting till the end for the questions we're going to mix them in i don't know if you've been here before throw your hands up in the air for any questions and tim will come find you and we'll mix it straight in hi um my question is for tom um, I'm going to test your memory here a little bit, so if you can't remember, it's fine. Um, there was a scene in Halloween 4 that was shot very early in production, which is why I think it was you underneath the mask. Correct me if I'm wrong. Michael chases Daniel Harris and Donald Pleasance to a schoolhouse. He pops up behind Donald Pleasance, grabs hold of him, and throws him through a classroom door. In that stunt, Michael's mask is noticeably different. 
It isn't white and he doesn't have dark hair. He has a tan and platinum blonde hair. Is there anything you remember about filming this scene if it was you under the mask? And how did they shoot that scene and not realize that the mask was wrong? Well, the, the short answer is no. <laughs> Actually, that was George P. Wilbur. Now, George came in and took over uh, half the movie. I worked the first half of the film. And when the, when the girl got impaled by the shotgun into the door, that's the last stunt I did. But I had done some stunts that, were left, that were, came on later in the, in the film. But mainly, I did a lot of the ser service station things. We broke through the uh, service station door with the uh, tow truck and tried to run down Loomis, and the station blew up. And then I'm downtown, and I put the mask on, and Daniels, that's when she sees Michael. So those are the things I did, but I was, and I know there's always been the controversy over that mask. We hear it all the time, so, but I don't know why. I wasn't privy to that. When you're wearing a mask, you can't tell what it looks like. So I, I'm not saying, oh, hey, wait a minute. This doesn't look right. <laughs> Platinum blonde Michael. Yes. He's just Ken. He's just Ken off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Tim, are you still? No. So, Doug, I'm going to come to you, and I'm going to move away from uh, Michael and Jason for a little while. You were in the 2019 reboot of Hellboy. Yes, and we shot one of the first uh, days of filming was in the UK. We shot at a cathedral. I forget the name, but when the, the churchgoers found out Hellboy was shot there, all hell broke loose. How dare they have a demon in this cathedral? Um, but yeah, we shot the first... A uh, week here, and then we went to Bulgaria for the rest of the film. Has everybody seen the 2019 David Harbour Hellboy? Neil Marshall, Neil the, Ma the awesome Neil Marshall. Neil Marshall. Uh, the I Descent. I genuinely figure sometimes that I'm the only person who either saw or liked that movie. Nobody, I know. It's crazy. Everybody likes the Guillermo version. And, and if you read the comics, Neil's version is the... Oh, I know that. Uh, uh, Mike Mignola was on set, and he said, this is the version that I wrote. Yeah. So... I, um, I, I've had several drinks with Neil over the years. Um, Love um, Neil. We got drunk last year, and I started going, Neil, listen, man, that Hellboy, that was, your, that was the real Hellboy. And he was like, the script was apparently even more. Well, there's a, a lot of t stories about Hellboy that I can't get into. I'm, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yet, Neil's a very cool guy. If you ever went back to do Dog Soldiers or The Descent, oh. do you think you'd want to follow him? I, I, I told Neil on set, I said, hey, man, if you ever do any sequels to any of those films, please, I will be there. Call me. Uh, I love his work. Yeah, man, he's a good dude. He's awesome. I was hoping he'd come down this weekend, but uh, he's a busy guy. Ah, I'd love to see him. Yeah. Oh, such yeah. a nice dude. Um, Tom, when I was doing research on you, what surprised me was you were in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, I did the first four films of Pirates of the Caribbean. And that was a real thrill, because as a kid growing up, you know, you watch all these uh, sword movies, and, and, you know, swashbuckler pirate movies. And here I am being able to do that and work with Johnny Depp and work with all the others. And it was a, it was a great experience. And of course, that's, that was actually the first time I grew a beard. It looked pretty ragged. I know as I, you know, during the day when I'd go to shopping or something, I'd open the door for somebody and they'd look at me like I was a homeless guy. <laughs> But it worked pretty good. I enjoyed doing those, those so what, movies. Obviously, open to both of you guys. What is the difference for yourselves from making smaller, lower-budget movies to doing big blockbusters like Pirates of the Caribbean or a big studio film like Freddy vs. Jason or Hellboy? Do you feel the difference on set? Is it a different vibe? There is a different vibe. And sometimes the independent films are the best and most rewarding. And by the way, I'd like to plug this. I have a... I have my first feature as a director. It's coming out in the States December 15th, and it'll soon come here. It's called Angel Baby. My wife is here. She stars in it. Please come to my table. We'll give you a postcard so you could follow our pages when it comes out. But it's called Angel Baby, and that was the most rewarding because it was independent. I directed it, and you wear so many different hats, but it's, it feels more family than a studio film. Um, but yet the studio films are, are rewarding uh, with money more, <laughs> you know. Uh, so they're both great, but, you know, uh, sometimes they're just more personal and more rewarding. Yeah, I think the big budget movies, and you do, I, I did some big Star Trek features, and it's a big deal, and 
But every day you work, it's still very similar. It's the same thing you're doing. You're setting up a stunt. You're working on some kind of gag. You're trying to make it look good, make it safe, and uh, it's very similar, whatever you're doing. But you get the feel of all you know, the bigger productions, of course. But like Doug says, uh, some of the smaller productions, they're, they're real rewarding. It's a lot of fun to do it because you have sometimes you have a little more you know, creative control because you, yes. you get to tell more exactly. of what you're going to do and how to do it. Some, some guys who are directing or, or running a show, they'll say, well, listen, how do you want to do this? And we'll say, oh, hey, let me help you with that. I'll show you what, what I think we should exactly. do. And sometimes that even comes out better for you, you yes. know, because you can, you can create what you, you feel like you'd like to. Yeah, as opposed to everything is set and you just go work. Well, that ties really nicely into my next question, which is there's a lot of stunt performers going into stunt direction and going into feature film direction. Um, most notably, the guys who did John Wick were famously were stuntmen yeah, yes. and have become the two best action directors in Hollywood. Obviously, is that is this stunt coordination into direction something that either of you have ever thought about or would you want to transition from independent to doing big budget action films? For me, I, always, I started as an actor and then being an athlete, a lot of the characters that I did required stunts. So I never pursued a stunt career, but yet I did roles that required stunts. Um, so I never had any ambition to be a stunt coordinator, but I always made little shorts and things as a, as a kid. So I always knew I wanted to direct it some, someday, but it's, it's tough to do that, you know? So my wife, Isabel Cueva, put our movie together and I, I wanna do more now, now that I did that. And I'd love to do uh, um, a studio film, but the thing is with studio films, you know, I had a lot of creative control and, and once you take on that, you have to listen to the higher ups and sometimes that could be a real chore. Neil can tell you about that. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've had that conversation. Yeah, I know you have. I've had that conversation. What about yourself, Tom? Did you, yeah. see, do you ever see yourself moving into a direction? Yeah, no, everybody who, who starts out, everybody in Hollywood has a script under their arm somewhere, you know, Great. and so everybody wants to do more. And of course, if, as a stuntman, you start out, and if you're able to go do a bar fight, the first time you do something, that's just great. Then you want to do more. Then you may be able to coordinate a, a show or so. And then looking at directing a movie. I did a little movie myself with another friend of mine, another stuntman and I. It never got distributed. I mean, but we did create the movie, and I know the feeling. It would be really nice if you could go out and direct some of your own things. Because everybody has their own idea and their own creative you know, vision of what they'd like to do. Because that's what you do for the director you're working for or any of the company. You're trying to, you're trying to create their vision. Well, everybody has their own, and it would be nice if you had the, the, the chance to actually do the directing yeah. and make it your own. Yeah, it's just not, it's very difficult to get a feature going. I mean, uh, raising money and all that uh, is not easy. So no, that's, that's why a lot of people, have, like you said, have a script, you know, but getting it made is a whole other story. That's a different, yeah, a different kettle of fish entirely. Yeah, that's, that's that secret dark box that you try to reach into if you try to go further than just doing somebody yes. else's work. Yeah. Can I ask you, um, can I ask you about the fans? Because Jason fans are particularly, what's the word I'm looking for? Intense? Upset? I, I, you see that middle finger there? That, that directly for me. That's James. <laughs> He's probably the biggest Jason fan. Yes. I've ever met. Can we have a big round of applause James. for James? Woo! Like Jason fans are pretty diehard. Have you ever encountered anything that's been surprising at one of these conventions? Has a fan ever shocked you or been? Yeah, I'm shocked right now with this picture. <laughs> that scares me. <laughs> we, we seem a little uh, deformed. I don't know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> We've stretched. We've got widescreen this year, guys. <laughs> yes. I've got to get a picture of that. I know, me too. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's, there's always unique interactions, but I have to say horror fans are the most awesome fans ever because I've... I've done a lot of sci-fi, as Tom has done a lot of sci-fi. We've been in several Star Treks. I was on the last season of Mandalorian. And I've done sci-fi conventions, too. And i got to say, horror fans are by far my favorite. So. Look at that. Look, give yourselves a round of applause, horror yes. fans. And look, at there's Freddy vs. Jason. Jason, right there. That's an awesome costume. There you All go. All right. There you yes. Go. That's, very, that's very cool. Is anyone okay if I dive into the sci-fi? Are we okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. 
because obviously there's a lot of sci-fi stuff for you guys. Mandalorian is a different experience altogether. Did you film in front of the weird? We did. The we, it's a new uh, volume wall where it's like all LED or I don't know exactly, but you're on a soundstage and they could project um, like a spaceship or spacecraft, and you don't leave on location. So they're be they're able to film so so efficiently and. When you're standing there, it looks like you're in a spaceship. That's how amazing it is. And it's just projection on a wall. That's how it's, and they have, they'll have some set pieces too to add into that, but it's amazing, the new technology. Look, it looks phenomenal. I didn't realize it was projection until the season one documentary. Yeah. Who directed your Mandalorian stuff? Oh, uh, John Favreau was on set. Yo! So I worked with John Favreau on a movie called Zathura before he blew up, and that movie still holds up to this day as an amazing film. Has everybody seen Zathura? It's... I played uh, one of the Zorgons in that, and that movie, John Favreau likes practical effects. He doesn't like CGI, just like Elf. He directed Elf, and it's practical. It's all forced perspective of, you know, when he's sitting in the little classroom. Um, so everything on Zathura was practical, and it just, that's what makes it so special, I think. It just holds up. Well, I was, I was going to segue from Mandalorian into Zathura, because... Favreau has taken over the world since you worked with him. You yeah. did, that was the last film he did before Iron Man. The, so, obviously, Zath what was the experience like on the set of Zathora? It was, if for anyone who doesn't know, it was a sequel to Jumanji. Yeah, it was. It, wa it wasn't a sequel. It was, it was like the same writer yeah. who wrote Jumanji, wrote Zathura, and it's like an adventure, like where they play, with, play a game and then it, the game comes to life. It was amazing, you know, like uh, these young actors have gone on to do huge things now, you know, and uh, John's gone on to do big stuff. It was a really fun film to work on. It was, it was, it was fantastic. And for yourself with sci-fi, obviously a lot of Star Trek. Yeah, I, I, I've had a lot of sci-fi. Any uh, Star Trek fans here? Yeah, there I started out with Star Trek, the motion picture. I got to double Spock, and that was a wow. great experience. And then, uh, I, since you're a stuntman and you do Star Trek, so you're always an alien. So I did 20 years of Star Trek, from Deep Space Nine, Voyager, uh, and 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 then um, uh, about four of the uh, the whole uh, series. And it's a real great experience. You do a lot of work with uh, makeup, so you go early in the morning, you get yourself made up, then you work all day in this in you know in plastic and rubber and all the stuff. And it's and it was it's great experience and and I had so much fun uh, over the years doing those different creatures and characters on on Star Trek, and then of course I did other kinds of things as well. But that was probably a, a major part of of the work I did the uh, about four or five of the films as well as those uh, different series. I did the 2008 reboot. I played this long face alien, which was amazing because the guy who did the makeup won the Academy Award for it. So I was a part of all that promotion and everything. That's brilliant. It was awesome. And that was J.J. Abrams. And he was just an incredible guy to work with. And then I did Star Trek Picard. Um, and, and I also did something in Deep Space Nine when I was in high school, right out of high school. Wow. Yeah, which was crazy. Deep Space Nine was great for it all the action. It was a great one. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It was well, awesome. We brought Klingons in yeah, and yeah. did all that kind of stuff. And so yeah. it was... How, how is it experience. trying to emote under makeup or in a costume? Because obviously, as an actor, it's a like Greek mask work when, when you're in college or uni and you do put a mask on and you've got a big movement. Is yes. It, is it a struggle, especially when you've got to do a character like Jason? Jason uh, isn't... The emoting is more in the body. I wouldn't say emoting. You're not emoting through the mask. But like for a makeup, you have to exaggerate sometimes the expression or else it won't read. So like in the Star Trek 2008 reboot, The Long Face, I was doing really like crazy face, face expressions to get little things to read, you know? You kind of have to push it a little for yep. it to read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when you're wearing makeup, uh, for stuntman, of course, you don't have to worry too much about the facial emotions as, as it's all body English, you know? You have to make things work. and. When you're doing fights, especially with weapons, in Star Trek, we'd have all kinds of wardrobe things, great big tunics and things that you had to fight, fight in, and it was made it difficult to do the moves. And then, two, you have a restricted vision because of those 
rubber pieces they put on your face, pretty soon you're, you, you don't have any peripheral vision and it's hard to, hard to look and see. So you have, to, you have to really work into that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, that's what we do. And you do, you do it well. And obviously you mentioned fighting in the makeup and, and uh, restricted vision. Do you have to do any training, like obviously special combat training for each film, or do you have to just have a base knowledge of how to move and how to fight? For me, I, I go based off what I'm doing. So, like, let's say, like, for Hellboy, for instance, was a, I play this pig character, and it, he had a huge animatronic head. And the head, I saw through the mouth, but when I looked forward, the eyes were in the air, the pig eyes. So I had to, I had to walk like this the whole time. And if I looked up, the eyes were in the air, and it was really difficult. So I, I trained with weights and stuff like that. So I kind of train for the character I'm playing if I have time. Sometimes with TV, you don't have time. So you're kind of just looking in the mirror and seeing how it all reads and talking to the director. Um, but I like to prepare if I can for each role. Because that's got to be difficult going in with no prep. And it's horrible. It's yeah. very difficult. Hellboy I had a little time to prep, but sometimes on TV it's so fast that you don't have much time. You just got to you gotta go with it. And you can't plan things sometimes. You gotta, like, sometimes the costume and makeup will tell you how you have to move or whatever. So planning stuff out may not work, you know, until you get in it and see. Yeah, I know that when you, uh, when, and for instance, in Star Trek, we always had a new weapon or something else to work with. And your basic knowledge of how to do fencing and fights, you just adapt it. For instance, the, the Batleth, which is one of the Klingon weapons, those things we had to learn to use, and we'd, we'd make up moves and things, and then we'd choreograph a fight, and we'd be off the set somewhere. Maybe we'd have a few days to practice and, and choreograph a fight, but we'd put that all together, and then we'd bring it into the s studio and show the director, and then he'd, they'd take what they need. So there's a process, but you uh, just have to make it adapt, and having had experience with fights and weapons before, you, you just make that all work for you. Sometimes you can't see well, and you know, like the Hellboy I couldn't see well, and I just had to do it. My head caught on fire, too, in one of the scenes, because of the Bulgarian, uh, uh, the power is different, and they supercharged it with the American plug, and I was in it, and I smelled smoke, and I was like, what's that smoke? And then I started coughing. <coughs> oh my God, my head's on fire, and I can't get it off myself. It's all hooked to wires. And Mila Jovovich got so pissed, she's like, get that fucking head off him right fucking now. And she was so mad. <laughs> she stuck up for me. Yeah, that's true. And when you do, when you do gags like stunt uh, fire burns, uh, you're dependent on all the guys that are working with you. You have stunt guys at your safeties. They have fire extinguishers, and, and, and uh, we have all the cues we need to uh, get a guy put out, because once you're on fire, you're just there, and you're at the mercy of everyone else to get you put this out. This wasn't a planned fire burn, uh, not though. A plan, unplanned <laughs> this fire is a little burn. different. <laughs> uh, unplanned fire burns are a little scary. Yeah. <laughs> well, because obviously we've, I've worked with um, many different stunt performers and actors over the years doing this, and a lot of them have been injured or been set on fire or had things catch on fire. Or died. Or died, yeah. I've not interviewed those ones. Um, has anybody, have you, sorry, have you, either of you had any serious injuries or any really close calls other than the, the pig head fire? I, uh, I've, I've kind of turned down stuff that, uh, that was a too big a stunt that I wasn't comfortable with, but I did some wire work on a show where they ratcheted me and they didn't dial in the, it was a, on, a, on a system, which is very, the, the pull like and the back. force is so, much and they didn't dial it in right and I slammed on the ground so hard that I don't know I, I was out of it for a while and had to go to the hospital and thank God I didn't get injured bad but my neck was killing me um, but I'm sure Tom has a lot worse than that well no actually I've been very fortunate not to have too many injuries but uh, yeah there you know the main thing with your stunt work you're concerned with of course you got to make the scene work have to look good but the most important thing is safety you got to be sure that you have, uh, you know, a safe stunt. I know I got 25 stitches in my forehead once when I had to jump off of a bridge, and uh, I did uh, to do the second half of the fall. Because often you'll do a cut, you'll see this fall coming from here, and then they'll turn the camera around and look down, and then you fall from a less height into frame. And I was on a seven-foot 
uh, a, a pedestal to jump down on top of this girl to make the fall finish. And uh, it didn't work out exactly as they wanted to because my head went into the ground and I took about 25 stitches and I had to run to the hospital, come back and finish the scene. <laughs> so stuff like that happens. Came back and finished the scene. Oh, sure. We of came back later yeah. on after they put some yeah, I had to. In. I had to go on and do that character again and do that ratchet. That was on a test, too. It wasn't even on the filming. So coming back and doing that thing again, I was so... It was so nerve-wracking. I tripped over, I split my head open, got 17 staples and took two weeks off work. You got 25 stitches and went back and finished the scene. I think that deserves a round of applause. Yes. It, it seemed natural at the time, though. I mean, you know, yeah, I got to get back to work. I mean, I was doing, I used to do live shows, live stunt shows when I first started out. If anybody's been to America, gone to Universal Studios, they have a That's stunt show That's where I got there. my start. Yeah, I started on that stunt show, and, and uh, that was a lot of fun for a stunt guy to be able to do stage work, and you know, you got an audience that reacts which, to Which you. one did you do? The original stunt show. The, oh, okay, was it the Wild West? Yeah, no, it was before that. It was one that oh. Lance Rimmer put together. Okay, I was there with the Wild West. And, yeah, I, I was and, there for all those. And, and Miami Vice. And, yeah, yeah, and I did the... Conan. Yeah. Conan, I did the Conan That's show. a good one. I helped do the blade work on that, too. Oh, I love the Conan show. That was a good show. Anyway. Great show. <laughs> I got hit in the head once doing that show. On We were doing a tour, and we were in Canada, and we had a stick fight, and I got grazed with a stick. Well, it's just like getting a punch. You can get cut real easily. Well, I got a big gash in my head, so I went to the hospital, got a step up, and came back and finished. Those live st the, stunt shows yeah. are way more dangerous than a, on a movie be. set. Because be. you're doing it all the time that you kind of get lax, you know? Because you're like, ah, I've, you know, you've done it a million times. We're on set, yeah. you're a little more, okay. You've got to get it First filmed. time, yeah. let's go, we got this. I know when we did, when I got hit, it was we were kind of late getting to the venue. We had to set up the whole stage. We were in a hurry to get going. We hadn't done the show for a couple months, and we just run right into it, and I just got clipped with this. It was an axe handle fight. But, uh, you know, stuff like that happens. But that's why they have stunt people. That's why stunt people are here. Because you can't have an actor that, get that a has big to gash. work with that kind of jeopardy. And if they get hurt, the whole production is shut that's down. That's your Tom Cruise, and you can do it all. Oh, yeah, he <laughs> does it all. He's superhuman, isn't he? He's... Oh, he has a double, but he, yeah, he does a lot. He does do stuff. a lot, He's yeah. He's good, yeah, he is. That last Mission Impossible film with the jump off the bridge. Is, would height bother either of you? Because like, yes, it's not a chance. I can't I do, do a high fall. I will not do it. Oh, I, I'm I, scared of heights. No, I do high falls. Uh, has anyone seen the Stunt Man with Peter O'Toole? Anybody remember seeing that? There's a high fall in it. Well, nobody saw it, so it's not important. But I did a high fall there. It was really kind of exciting. And I've done a lot of other ones, but uh, yeah, any stunt man, I don't care who you think he is, you have a healthy respect for heights. Now you'd like to think that you're not afraid of heights, but you're certainly you respect it because when you're up 40 feet, 50 feet, and you're ready to go fall into something, you got to have it correctly set up. So uh, you want to make sure it's all done well. And once you do have a chance to practice what you're doing, you have a lot of confidence in what you're doing. And that's the difference between being a daredevil and a stuntman. Yes, that's because uh, a stuntman has to come back to work the next day. That's you know, true. a daredevil may do a big event, and if he gets hurt, he'll be gone for a while. But he'll be back maybe in six months or so. But you want to keep working. Yeah. You're not, not, they're not evil Knievels in the stunt business. No, no. No one's jumping 16 buses today. Has anybody got, we've got about five minutes left. Has anyone got any more questions for Tom or Doug? Right on the front row, sir. That's a fast mic, he man. just appeared out of nowhere. <laughs> Give this man a raise. Yes. Uh, he should work for tennis. <laughs> Firstly, it's great to see you guys. I met you both at Halloween 45, so I'm looking forward to seeing you on our shores. Thank you very much. We talked about the big screen, so I wanted to talk about the small screen, uh, the upcoming Friday the 13th series. Anything you would like to see in it, anything that's not been done in the films from either a stunt perspective or a storyline perspective? Well, I would like to see Jason in there uh, because uh, right now he's not a part of uh, the film. It's more about the mom and stuff like that. Uh, but if, for the Jason fans, has anybody seen Never Hike Alone 2? I'm in Never Hike Alone 2, which is a Jason fan film, um, and it's very well done. Yeah, I haven't been doing, I've been out of the stunt business for a few years, so I'm not up to date with all these, but yeah, there's a lot to do, and there's a lot, with the new technology, uh, CGI, and everything that goes on, I, it, we've got such a big 
opportunities in the future. I know when I first started, if you were to fall into an airbag, that was a big new deal, just to have a bag that you could inflate as opposed to making cardboard boxes. Yeah. And uh, so ever since then, and then wire work, and then CGI, I, I did uh, Ghostbusters, the first one, and I know when they were first doing CGI on that movie, we didn't have any idea what they were talking about, because here's the actors looking at a blank wall and shooting at something, and the idea was that this is going to be the biggest turkey in the world. Nobody's going to know what's happening. And it turned into being Ghostbusters. <laughs> so you don't know. Stunt work um, back in, in uh, when you started was a lot more dangerous than it is now. Well, it, it had more danger, but we do much greater things now. It's just like everything else. It gets bigger, and you got to, you know, you do a, one movie, and you say, well, we got to do more than that. And so they make it bigger, and there's more action. And, more explosions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Did you feel that pressure to up the ante every time? I mean, for me, I I don't want to do the stunt. To be honest, I do it because it's part of a character. So I never was passionate about doing stunts. I didn't want to do the stunt, but sometimes it came with the territory. So I did it because I was playing a character. Tom has a different. Well, yeah, I, I, as a kid, I, I, I was a stunt kid, you know, I just, I loved action and falling and fighting and all that. And when I got it, when I found out there was something like a stunt job, uh, you know, oh, wait a minute. I was actually working for the Forest Service when I was in college, and uh, they brought out a, a production company to shoot this uh, Wild Kingdom. And I was fighting forest fires with the, with the smoke jumpers, and, and that was a crew that was out of Montana, and we'd use a parachutes you just jump into uh, you know wooded areas that you couldn't reach so they use uh, smoke jumpers to get to the fire to put it out well they use us in this speech in this uh, TV show and all of a sudden I did a show and I had no idea what it was about and I was a stunt guy so I went down to Universal Studios and saw the stunt guys they say hey, what can I do to, 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 to continue with this they told me where there was a stunt school and I, I never turned back I mean that's what I wanted to do I want to be a stunt man I've been offered some kind of acting things before, too, and I said, well, uh, is there any action to it, you know? That's what I want to do. It's in your blood, isn't it? Where is your actor, actor by heart, director by trade, stuntman by necessity? Yeah. You're, you're just dangerous. I mean, I love action and I love physical, so I love doing action-y stuff and, and real physical stuff and fights. It's just the high falls and things like that that I was like, ugh. I, I'm scared of we, that. Well, we trained a lot when I was starting, and we learned to learn to do high falls and, and, and stuff. So uh, when people ask me sometimes, what is the most dangerous stunt you've ever done? I'll say dialogue. <laughs> We've got time for one last question. I hope this is a good one to end it on. You've both played Michael Myers. You've both played Jason Voorhees. I'm not going to ask who would win in a fight. Who is your favorite out of the two? Go ahead. Uh, I've always... The first horror movie I saw was Halloween 2 with Dick Warlock. So I've been more of a Michael Myers fan. In 2015, I went in and auditioned for a movie called Halloween Returns and was told that you're the guy. They had a deal with uh, Harvey Weinstein and they had a falling out with him and the movie was never made. So I said, oh man, I'm never gonna get my opportunity. Then when Halloween Kills came around, they put me in for the flashback. I didn't get that, but the stunt coordinator called me to double James Drew Courtney. So I finally got behind the mask as the stunt double, but I still want my own movie where it's just me playing the character. I think with that new deal that's been struck recently, Man. I think we need... We need they we know me. I hope it happens, but you never know in this business. But I have to say, putting on that Myers mask and the coveralls because I was such a fan as a kid was absolutely surreal. And that Halloween Kills mask is... Looks it's awesome. pretty brutal. It's awesome. Lives up to the name. Yeah, yeah. James was amazing in that movie. Uh, we're asked, or at least I'm asked all the time about this question, who do I like best, Michael or, or Jason? And, and since I did two movies and I got to do a lot of stuff, uh, one day I'll remember something like what I really liked doing was when I was in uh, Friday Five, I got hit with a tractor and 
that was one of my favorite things. And so a day I'll be thinking about that. He says, oh, yeah, Jason. And then, then I got to thinking about stuff I did on, you know, coming out of the, the truck, breaking down of the police, uh, of the uh, service station and running down Loomis. and all. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Michaels fan. Man. So I'm conflicted. I can't give you a straight answer. And that is an amazing way to end it. Guys, please give it up for Doug and Tom. Yes. Thank you, guys. Make sure you go and see them at the table in the photo ops.